People have been crashing cymbals for centuries. History tells us that cymbals were used in Israel in 1100 BC. Over the centuries, the finest cymbals have been manufactured in Turkey with a secret method for blending metals. And those time-honored techniques still resound in cymbal making today. Symbols play an important role in today's music making. Each symbol has its own character, resulting in subtle differences in tone. To make symbols, they start with castings. In this case, they're made of a secret blend of copper, tin, and trace amounts of silver. A worker sorts them by weight. Then a moving tray that's powered hydraulically takes them to a rotary oven. 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit softens the castings, and then workers shovel them into a rolling mill. It squeezes them between two big metal cylinders, and the effect is the same as rolling out pie crust. The castings become thinner, flatter, and larger. These castings go through a heating and rolling cycle up to 12 times, depending on the type of symbol being made. The repeated heating and cross-rolling creates a dense, interlocking weave in the granular structure of the alloy. It will make the symbol strong enough to take a real beating. The interlocking weave will also help transmit sound waves more rapidly across the symbol. After the symbol has been tempered and pressed into its final shape, they place it on a spindle. While it spins, circular cutters shear the edges to a set diameter. Next, the symbol is pounded. A hydraulic engine powers this hammering cylinder, and a computer program directs the force. These impressions will enrich the symbol's sound by changing the path of the sound waves. Next, the application of tonal grooves. This craftsman puts the symbol on a lathe, bottom side forward. The symbol spins on an axle while the lathing blade cuts into it. He starts with a handheld lathing tool and then switches to one that's mounted on the machine. Lathing removes the symbol's outer layer and carves those important tonal grooves into it. The depth and position will vary depending on the type of symbol being produced. He lays the top of the symbol entirely by hand so he can better control the amount of pressure applied. Watch those fingers. Don't worry, he knows what he's doing. He's honed his skills over five years of apprenticeship and no automatic machine can duplicate the fine touch of an experienced symbol craftsman. Now he removes the newly grooved symbol and puts it on an edging machine. A big round metal clamp locks the symbol in place. It spins while a cutting tool smooths out the edge of the symbol. Here's a before and after shot. The ragged rim is before edging. The smoother one at the bottom is after. This guy has the best job. He's in charge of quality assurance. That means he tests each symbol before it's sent out into the marketplace. He's listening for a range of sounds. Now a laser etches the trademark into the symbol. It also engraves a unique serial number. Next, a silicon pad sponges up ink from a print plate and transfers it to the symbol. Now that the company logo is on, it's ready for shipping anywhere in the world. But this rough metal casting has already come a long way. It's been transformed into a smooth, sleek symbol over a total of 21 days.